honey is brought into this hot room here. It'll hold about uh, 10,000 boxes at a time and it's ran through. It all comes in through the end over here, all on forklifts, all on pallets. Uh, it's stacked too high. It holds uh, 12 semi loads this way. Uh, if you go three high, you can get 18 in here, but you don't get the centers heated as well. That's why we end up with just stacking them doubles all the time. And on a good year, we got both all the lines running out here. We can run through the whole room in four days extracted. And so it's constantly bringing in from other locations and keeping the building hot. Uh, we keep it around 100 to 105 degrees in here all the time. I uh, have overhead fans, overhead heat, floor heat, uh, just to keep that temperature up there. So the honey will flow through all the machines a lot better. It's a lot of boxes to go through. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. Okay, I'm gonna step over here. Okay, because we extract from different locations, we keep track of where the honey comes from, uh, from our Kimball location, our Bruce location, our Nebraska location. And so each one is, is extracted and kept track of where the honey comes from so we know how the production is going on in each uh, location for that year. We have four different tanks in the back. We'll see that later. And so each one is marked as to what honey is being, is in those tanks at that time. So again, when we barrel the honey, we know exactly where the honey came from and, and we'll stack it separately. We take care of everything here in the Bruce area, uh, our Kimball locations, and then the Nebraska locations. All that honey is brought into this spot. So the other three main areas are all extracted here, but the Roscoe does all of their own up there. They are the biggest location that we have, and so they take care of their own. brought in here, uh, set on the tables, taken off, and goes down through and goes to one of the two uh, uncappers and extractors. It holds 120 frames on each cycle, okay. and uh, during that time, it's, the extractor is spinning the honey out while the other 120 frames are going in. It's set up for about a 16-minute run on it to get the, the majority of the honey out. Uh, this system here is uh, the Cowan system that we use at this place uh, with the Cook and Beals heat exchangers and separators. Um, at our lo Roscoe location, they use all the Cook and Beals equipment. Uh, just uh, that's what they started out with there, and that's what we continue to use. When we set this place up. We thought we'd try this system, where it's a little bit more automated, and uh, that's how we've gone with here. These knives here are vibrating, and they're they're heated, as, and so when they're vibrating back and forth, any wax maybe get on this side here. Uh, we don't have a good one coming through here yet. That you can do, it'll cut that thin layer of wax off of the frame, and so you can get the honey out of it as it's extracted. Okay, if you look at this one right there, it's coming through. You can see it cuts the wax off of it. The next one there, and as it comes down, it cuts that thin layer of wax off. All the wax and honey drops down into this tank here, and then when this is extracted, the frames go in here and are extracted. The honey is then augered back into this tank and mixed with the, with the wax before it's pumped up overhead into our heat exchangers and separators. After the honey is 
mixed from the extractor and then capper is pumped up overhead into one of these heat exchangers. Each line has its own heat exchanger. And each line has its own separator. If we have a problem with one separator on our heat exchanger, we can switch to run two lines off of one system for a short period of time, uh, depending on how heavy the honey flow is coming out of it. Uh, you can go longer, but uh, typically we like to run one heat exchanger for one line, one separator for one line. Just makes things flow a lot better. Just come on up this way. Yep. Just watch the. After it comes out of the heat exchanger and it's warmed up again, it'll drop down into, into the separator here. And you can see down there all the wax and honey is going in together. And as it spins, the honey comes to the outside of the drum and goes into the tank here. There's ports in there that allow the honey to come out. The wax stays on the inside of the, of the drum. And there's a rotating knife that uh, cuts the wax out and drops down below. Then after that, the honey is then pumped up overhead into the tank room. Here's the wax as it comes out. All of this goes up to our Roscoe location where we have a place that we melt all the wax down up there and put it into 40 pound blocks okay. and then sell that afterwards. So. Here we'll hold about 48 drums, 55 gallon drums of honey. Uh, we split it into two separate lots. Every 24 drums, we make a new lot and during the barreling process about halfway through we'll take a sample of it and so we can grade the color of it grade the moisture of it and be able to keep track of what it is and what we want to uh, market it as whether it's uh, an extra white honey or white or an extra light amber and we just uh, have our own tracking of it a little bit that way and and we stack it all separate in the warehouse as it's graded we put it in the appropriate location i want to grab a good barrel weigh it and we'll wait fill one Okay, these here. All the barrels are weighed empty. So we have, have a tear weight on them. So most of them go out here, like I said, in a semi-load. And so then we just take the tear weights off all the drums. Um, if somebody who does come in and they just want to buy a uh, handful of drums, then we can weigh them up individually and all. But, uh, and then each one is marked as to, again, where it came from, uh, like the Bruce location, our Roscoe Kimball, our Cedar Rapids, our Ansley, our Louisiana locations, wherever they may be at, we can, keep track of it on the drum too so even though it's stacked uh, you can go later on and make sure that's what you're what you are putting on the truck is the correct Yeah, this would be raw honey, uh, about as close as you can, can get. There'd still probably be some traces of wax in there, but the majority of it's all gone at this point.
then you're done with that and it's on to the next one. Then after here, they're all taken out, stacked in the other room here, graded before we uh, go ahead and stack them in the warehouse completely. But they'll just sit them out here on the floor and then we'll grade them usually the next day after we barrel them so it gives us a little chance for the, the sample to settle and be able to a little clearer and be able to tell the grades of the honey and the, a lot easier. Like I said, all the barrels are brought out here, set in the lots, and then uh, when they're graded or when we're ready to stack them, and we'll stack them in the warehouse here. And each lot uh, location will have, it, <coughs> excuse me, its own lot uh, as to where it came from. And so we'll be able to tell what the honey is. Like this honey here is from our Westington location. This is from our Bruce location. We write on there, you know, well, what color it was. This is white honey. Uh, this is more Bruce lo location honey. Um, typically, we'll put it in three, three rows because uh, you can get the 24 drums in two rows that way. And if it's really good honey and we're running a lot of one locations, then we'll, we'll go up to six rows wide. And it just makes it easier for us to stack them and keep track of it. And, but, so each place, like here's a Bruce. Here's a Bruce over here he's working on now. I believe that is a uh, Kimball over there. And um, Westington's here. So we you know, keep track of where it's at in the warehouse. So when we go to sell it, if somebody calls for the, a white honey and that's what they're looking for, well, we've got the white honey from Bruce and we can give them a sample of that. And then it goes to, to uh, ship it out. They come in here, pick out which ones we tell them to again. Yeah.